be a mom now because that is always what I've always wanted to do and be. I do not like what this niche and community has turned into recently. If you want to be shrewd, you have to see the potential danger. Prepare yourself. Hello. So this is going to be a commentary video. A lot of thoughts into one video. I wrote a big long script um, so I'll be looking at my laptop from time to time um, but we need to readdress something that is making its wraps again. You hear any background noise? It's Layla. Layla's right here. Uh, so we need to address, readdress something that is making its rounds again and that is the trad wife movement. I made a video a year or two years ago, lost track. I have it pinned on my channel, pinned on a lot of places about my feelings about the trad wife movement. Am I a trad wife? Yes. By definition, I'm a trad wife. I'm a traditional housewife. I stay home, my husband goes out to work, he brings home the money and I make the, the house the home. By that definition, I am a trad wife. However, in the past year, that definition online has changed and the community online has changed and that is what I want to talk about. So let's hop into a little bit of a very brief and condensed history about the trad wife movement online. I made a video about this, just like I mentioned before. Go watch that video first, then come back here. Um, so let's talk about what's happening now. If you have been a longtime follower of mine, you know that I have been making homemaking videos since 2018. The homemaking niche is not new. Now, many media and journalistic outlets nowadays are trying to make it seem like it's some new this year 2024 phenomenon it is not new i have been here since 2018 the only difference between me and some of these newer people that the media is spotlighting is i'm not blonde i'm not super skinny and i'm no longer 22 years old and if you are any of those things i love you you're great that's it's not a shade on you at all it's just the media tends to favor if you look a certain way and you know, that's just a fact of life. I started making videos online because I personally felt motivated when I watched other people with their homemaking videos online. So I decided, let me make my own videos and see if, you know, if I can help somebody the way that, you know, those videos have helped me, that would be great. So now we are, so now we're here five, six years later, and I have close to over, close to 300,000 subscribers slash followers across YouTube. Instagram and TikTok. But it was back in 2019, I met a group of ladies online. Some of these ladies I have met face to face, most of them I have not, but we all kind of run in the same circle, the homemaking niche. We were all and still are all very passionate about making our homes to be our havens, to be skilled at home, to be empowered at home and to be inspired in the home. All of these women had a goal of teaching useful information to other like-minded women. And that I want to emphasize two words, teaching useful information. So these women, I wrote them all down so I don't forget. So these women are of course, Elena Patet of the Darling Academy, Cynthia Lowen, Caitlin of Mrs. Midwest, Jennifer L. Scott of the Daily Connoisseur, Lisa Bass of Farmhouse on Boone, Room Midgards on Instagram, Felicia of the Feminine Fan fancy and the list just goes on and on but if you were an og follower back in like 2019 2020 th this was the group of women that were helping we were all helping each other and helping others to feel more feminine at home be more productive at home learn new skills at home we were learning things together the useful things where no matter what your background was those things were useful so all of those women I consider the OGs of the homemaking community. So, so what happened since then? Well, 2020 happened, COVID happened. And in 2020, if you recall, you can go watch my other video on this. The BBC interviewed Miss Elena of the Darling Academy and it just snowballed from there. But personally, what happened since 2020, myself included, many of us OG creators, we got married, we started having kids, we took breaks. We actually did what we said we wanted to do on our channels, which was be wives and mothers. And obviously our channels and being creative online took a back seat to what we actually wanted to do, which was being wives and mothers. So as we kind of stepped back, other people came forward to fill that space. 
which is fine, which is great. I am so, I was so excited seeing this community grow and seeing so many new faces and so many new creators and seeing so many new ideas. I love that. But it has become a dual edged sword. So in the past, so it is now July. So I want to say in the past, I want to say six months, maybe a year, uh, this online homemaking community, the Tradwife community, has become, for lack of a better word, a dumpster fire. This is not the same community that it once was. And I do understand communities change. We are supposed to change and grow and adapt. <laughs> I'm gonna explain. There have been videos by much newer creators who have been making the rounds. These videos have been making the rounds and they say, and I'm gonna read from my, my laptop screen here, they say that all women, blanket statement, all women need to be stay at home wives and mothers or that you need to get married as young as possible and have as many children as possible. Blanket statement, not allowing for nuance, not allowing for conversation. Um, that's problematic because as you know, a logical person understands that not all people want to get married and have children one day. Not all people want that. Not all people want to be stay at home wives or stay at home parents or stay at home people, whatever. That's not logical to say that all people must do that. So these blanket statements that are lacking nuance or lacking the ability to have a nuanced conversation, not really liking that. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> Some creators are purposefully ignoring, um, like I said, the nuance when it comes to very valid critiques and concerns people have about being a single income family. They kind of brush these valid concerns and criticisms under the rug and just say, don't worry about it. Don't do that. This is one that I saw recently that just made my eyes go, what? what? Um, they say, oh, my husband is just who tells me what to think. No, we, we all have minds of our own. Let's, let's, let's remember that. And then this one, this one, I, I can't believe I saw, um, they say this one video said that husbands should be able to physically discipline their wives. That is abuse. That is abuse. That is not okay. Um, other videos saying that they're telling young girls that they don't need to get an education or a career set and that they just need to blindly trust in the Lord. Um, I believe in Jesus myself. Uh, I never talk, I rarely ever talk about my faith here on this channel. Um, uh, but no, that's not how that works. You have to give God something to bless. You can't just blindly throw caution to the wind. Um, a lot of these creators, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, but they're just blindly rage baiting. That is problematic to just farm rage. It's not healthy. It's not healthy for yourself as a creator because then you see all these comments coming in and you're getting tagged and so many things. And it's not healthy for the, for the community that you are trying to cultivate. We have lost the original plot of the homemaking movement it's lost. This original, this space, the original plot of the homemaking movement was to empower, educate, inform, and grow a personal community. This was about meeting women where they already were. For instance, my videos have never been about saying that you have to live this way. No, it is about saying like, if you are already interested in this, here, here you go. That, that's kind of the messaging, overall messaging <clears throat> on my channel here. As creators, when we are building a following online and we, we are building a community, we need to be very careful about the messages that we are spreading. And I think in the past year or two, there have been a lot of newly wedded young women who have come online and they want to supplement their husband's income. They want to have a new hobby. And that is great. That is wonderful. That is amazing. Those are goals I had when I started my YouTube channel or my Instagram account. I wanted to supplement a little bit of my husband's income and I wanted to, you know, have a new hobby. But again, it can become a double edged sword and we need to be careful. So like I mentioned before, on one hand, we might start off genuinely coming from a genuine good place with wanting to build a community online, but then that kind of creeps into that, that not so good place. We start off making these videos that are meant to be helpful, a cooking tutorial, a cleaning tutorial, but they're not getting the numbers that they need to be getting. They're not getting the engagement, the following, the comments. 
and then one day you see a trending audio or a trending you know quote and you see that that got a lot of comments and that got a lot of likes and shares and you do that and it's rage bait and all of a sudden your account was blowing up and then it just is a cycle one right after the other you're left trying to one up yourself to say the next craziest thing to one up the last crazy thing you said and it's just an endless cycle and then now we're no longer producing helpful useful information that that is meant to teach which was our original goal everyone has the right to freedom of speech that's if you live in the united states you have that right but we have to remember our words can do harm and we have to be careful about the messages that we are spreading so like i mentioned before we might have started in a good place of wanting to help people but then we kind of fell into that rage bait hole of just saying crazy things to get a reaction out of people now we're not producing useful content now we're not producing content that's helpful we're just producing garbage so we just need to be mindful that our words have impact so what do i mean by that what do i mean by our words have impact so some people have shared their stories of what happens when a single income family goes wrong when something happens to the provider of that family and all too often i will see these newer younger creators say oh that's too bad oh that could never be me oh you should have picked a better husband um no 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 that is wrong on so many levels one because we should want to learn from others experiences why fall flat on your own face when you could see somebody has already tripped somewhere and you can learn to how to avoid that hazard it's a horrible analogy just came to mind just now but we should want to always be learning from others so that we don't have to suffer those consequences if we can learn from something if we can learn for the better why why not why not listen and have an open ear and a sympathetic heart if someone is coming to me sincerely and i say sincerely because all, all too often comments online they they come at me and they're from a place of they want to make me feel stupid or they want to make me feel less than but if somebody is sincerely genuinely coming to me and they're saying hey this is something i wish i knew i'm gonna listen and another point is many of these newer creators they claim to be christian and they constantly say oh just trust in the lord trust in the lord yes trust in the lord but also i'm reading from my notes here ecclesiastes 9 11 that is a scripture that pretty much says the swift do not always win the race nor do the mighty win the battle because time and unexpected unexpected events overtake them all so pretty much anything can happen things happen even the strongest person stuff can happen to them and hot off the coattails of that i want to remind everybody about proverbs 22 verse 3 which reads the shrewd one sees the danger and conceals himself but the inexperienced keep on going and suffer the consequences and I, that is what i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot of inexperience and they just keep on going and maybe that's just the part of gaining experience is that you just gotta fall down a few times but if somebody is coming and trying to help you not fall down listen now I got married at 22. I remember what it was like to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and excited for new marriage. That's normal. That's exciting, but it's still an experience. And that's still okay. That is just the reality of things. So now I'm cringing. I'm cringing a bit when I'm seeing these blanket statement videos being made online of saying that all women need to stay at home. All women need to get married at 18. All women need to have a bunch of kids as possible. I'm, I'm cringing at that because the logic part of my brain knows that not everybody wants that. And I mentioned that before earlier in this video, but not everybody wants that. And to make those blanket statements is just cutting off constructive conversation on how we can help other women. So instead of making messaging like, oh, being a housewife is the best Thing forever for me everybody should do this no we shouldn't be having that messaging we should be having constructive messaging we should be having sending out messages of teaching young women to know their own heart to find that inner secret person of the heart as the scriptures say to learn themselves to take the time to mature and 
to teach themselves so that they don't become a victim of lust blinded love or a red flag guy disguised as a green flag. Over the years I have had numerous young ladies who are getting ready to graduate high school email me asking, hey, what's your advice? I would love to become a wife and mother one day. Um, <clears throat> how can I best go about preparing for that future? And this is the exact advice I give them. First, I always congratulate them if they're getting ready to graduate high school. That's a great, great milestone, so happy for them. But I still encourage to go to a trade school or a community college. Now that's a lot of something, that's something that a lot of these newer, younger trad wife homemaker creators are not doing. They're saying all college and all higher education is a scam. That is not true. Do I think that a lot of big name universities and degrees they aren't worth what they're being what they're charging yeah i do agree but a modest skill set from a community college or a trade school is valuable so a skill set such as accounting such as let me see i wrote down my whole list of all the things i always recommend being a paralegal an accountant hospitality management a cna going and getting your nursing degree your cosmetology license that is something i have i have my cosmetology license sports medicine web design tax preparation real estate the list goes on and on these are all things that you can get at a local community college or from a uh, trade school for very little cost and these are all skill sets that can translate into the home like for me, for instance, I'm terrible at cutting hair, but if I was good at cutting hair, I'd be cutting my husband and my son's hair all the time. I instead chose to be an esthetician with my cosmetology license, so my son and my husband have great skincare routines. But things like being an accountant, you can manage your family's finances from home. If you go into tax preparation, you can do your family's taxes, not only your family's taxes, but every once in a while during tax season, you could even bring in an income having a small, modest tax home tax business. Being a CNA, being a nurse, that can transfer into the home as well, being, taking care of a sick spouse, taking care of a sick relative or sick children, as well as re real estate or web design. You could do these things on the side to supplement income or fall back on if the time or if a need arises. And during that time, you are trying to learn a skill. You are going to community college or a trade school. Don't date don't date my dad always said you're 19 20 teen 21 teen 22 is closer to when you're being an adult and i agree with that i agree with that because you're still very much the glasses of youth are still on you're not fully past what the bible says what the scripture says the bloom of youth and the scriptures advise that you be past the bloom of youth before you consider getting married because it, it, you're silly when you're young. You're silly when you're young. It's, it's just a fact of life. So date yourself. Date yourself, learn who you are, who you want to be, what type of woman you want to be in the future. And as you mature, you will be less susceptible to being hurt, having your heart broken, needlessly broken, um, and falling victim to a red flag man disguised as a green flag. If we want to be creators that help and to empower and inspire single income families, we need to not be afraid to talk about the awkward topics. Topics like what happens if your husband dies? What happens if your husband leaves you? What happens if, what happens if, what happens if? A lot of times these topics just get swept under the rug by younger creators. They say things like, oh, you should have picked a better husband. Oh, my man could never. Oh, I will always blah, 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 blah. No, we need to actually provide the tools that we have. So just like Ecclesiastes 9, 11 says, things happen. We need to be aware that things happen. We need to be prepared for if those things happen. It's uncomfortable to think about. Nobody wants to think about those things, but you have to, because just like what Proverbs 22 verse 3 says, if you want to be shrewd, you have to see the potential danger, prepare yourself. And a lot of these younger creators, they just, they just brush these things, of, oh, you're criticizing me. That would never happen to me. You're, this, this is a criticism of me. It, it's not a criticism. People are genuinely reaching out and taking your hand and saying, hey, this happens. Are you prepared? Yes. 
I am prepared. Thank you. Because I do, I do on the flip side, I totally under 100% understand that it is exhausting to constantly be asked that online because nobody is going to law boss babe attorney 3000 instagram page i just made that username up <laughs> but nobody's going to her page she's a manhattan lawyer and asking her what her backup plan is nobody is going to a career uh, up to a career woman and stopping her and saying well what happens if your husband leaves you what happens if this what happens if that do you have a backup plan nobody is going to those women they're always just coming to us to the homemakers to the stay-at-home moms the stay-at-home wives they're always coming to us and it is exhausting it's so exhausting so if you are somebody who has ever done that know that we hear you we have heard you chances are we do have a plan and if we don't have a plan i am here to say make a plan <laughs> the reality the reality is that no matter what way the cookie crumbles whether you're a career woman or a full-time stay-at-home caregiver it sucks if something happens it sucks big time and yes i do acknowledge that as a stay-at-home mom as a stay-at-home wife with now an eight-year gap in my resume i am at a disadvantage compared to a career woman i acknowledge that dis that, that i acknowledge that disadvantage i am okay with that disadvantage because the advantages of staying home outweigh that disadvantage anywho i have so much more i could talk about <laughs> when it comes to this topic um this is just just a stream of consciousness video kind of sorta i hear gabriel waking up from his nap i'm gonna go be a mom now because that is always what i've always wanted to do and be and and yeah if you have any questions guys please leave them in the comments down below i would love to consider continuing this conversation about the state of the homemaking niche trad wife stuff i would love to continue having that conversation um but bottom line to summarize everything am i a trad wife yes i'm still a trad wife i'm an old trad wife though who does not like how this niche how this community has i do not like what this niche and community has turned into recently and i would love to see it you know come back to a place of logic and soundness of mind uh maybe it won't maybe it's long gone forever but hopefully by putting out this video i can find other like-minded women who are logical and of sound mind <laughs> who just want to be homemakers just want to cook just want to thrive at home and not be in a land of delusion so anywho please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you guys next time. Bye.